Speaking of the spook, uh, spooky season, you have a demon tale for I us? I do. I do. We're so, going off the rails here tonight. All right. So a uh, little context. As a child, I always used to see things. Ghosts, demons, goblins, monsters, voices, all this shit constantly. I hated it. Um, but it was a part of my reality. But it got lesser as I got older. So mm -hmm. probably something growing up, environmental, hormonal, whatever. Yeah. Uh, in this was probably about I was like 12, 13 years old. And in that time, I was very tired of this aspect of my life. So I used to try to take pictures of things like that when I whenever it would pop up, whenever I would see it, because I figured ghosts hate cameras. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, that and I was living in a place in Kentucky that I considered to be extremely haunted. I have a story about an evil doll, I can tell you as well or dolls, plural, that move on their own. Uh, so I was freaked out. I was like a little nervous ball of mess of a kid. Every fucking day there was a voice or a noise or some goddamn light or some spooky thing or some problem it, at least a couple times a week, right? Can you describe like what it was you were seeing? Like a fully formed thing, a shadow? We're, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting yeah. there. Okay. So in the context of this story, I'm minding my own business in my bedroom. I'm just cleaning it. I'm like 12, 13. It's a mess, right? And it's a nice like old wood cabin kind of place. So we have these wood doors with the complicated grain pattern and stuff. And I'm minding my own business. And I look over at the door and I watch it like warble very briefly mm. as if something is trying to push through the wood grain pattern. Now, here's the bizarre thing. What you're probably imagining is something like the Predator or like an elite from Halo standing in front of it with like the light bending. Mm -hmm. But it was more like my brain was opening to a pattern in the wood grain that I could previously not perceive, but now that I could. And it was both moving and not moving at the same time. And it was wiggling and wobbling and coming together. And it formed the shape of something that I would say would be a cartoon demon, something like you would imagine out of an 80s or 90s scary movie, you know, demonic mm -hmm. uh, uh, goat legs, scary hands with nails and horns and whatnot. Huge, full frame of the door just standing there. And it's like, hi, hi. Um, <laughs> I'm like Jesus. flipping out. I'm like turning white and I'm like just fucking scared shitless. And the thing starts talking to me and telling me uh, how fun it's been to play with me and that my brother's on the chopping block next. Can't wait to see what he's going to do to him. And uh, Jesus. But it was talking not in my ears. It was talking up here. There was a voice and thoughts in my head that were not my own, just flowing in from somewhere. And I was panicking. And I remember as a child, caring about my brother a lot. So I told it to stay with me and leave him alone. And it thought this was very amusing, said it would do so. And then said, let me give you a little preview of the future. And the wood grain just snapped. And it was almost like a TV screen, but like 2D and made of wood lines, just flashing little things in the that theoretically would be in the future. Also, also an awful nasty stuff, right? A lot of bad things. And then pops back to the demon and it's just like, bye. And immediately the pattern goes away. It never changed to begin with. I could no longer perceive this. And the scary thing was that of the four things that I was shown, three have come true. Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure not all of them are things you want to share. Are any of them something you could? It's primarily personal things with my family. Fair enough. Just yeah. Things that would, you know, like how grandma dies, stuff like that. Well, that's um, so you were hallucinating regularly as a child all the time. Um, not all, as I got older, much lesser as a very young child. Yes. At the very least, I, as an adult, I think Taylor like phrased that, that incorrectly. When did the visions begin? As long <laughs> when as I can the... remember. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Kyle. I'm sorry. This is, this is the Halloween season. We no, need to buy in. <laughs> literally as long as I can remember. Uh, you want a killer a doll gypsy? story? When did you did... realize you were a seer? <laughs> when I was seven did years old, I had, had to go to, to uh, various like, psychiatrist and analyst or whatever to let them do whatever they were going to do. Uh, they put me on a lot of different medications that children should not take, and it didn't help the problem at all. I had a terrible home environment, so it was probably some manifestation of that. That kind of instability is really bad for little kids. A lot of scary movies, stuff like that. Um, you ever but, seen any aliens or anything? No. I've seen Your shadow people. I've seen lights. Uh, a shadow person, man. It's a per <laughs> it's, it's like a fucking like a, a shadow on your wall of a person, but there's no fucking person there. Well, I hate that. That's yeah, I don't like that either. <laughs> yeah, I don't care for that either. Is your home life extraordinarily me. bad or like normal bad? Like parents got divorced, like half of kids go through. Extraordinary. Okay. Fuck. So um enough to make you see demons and wooden doors. Up until like 
20 minutes ago. I, we, can, we, can, um, we, can make this, we can make this one. So the way to think about it, I, you know, you talked about DMT and that's what gave me the idea. I legitimately think that my brain do DMT, dropped a tiny happy. bit of the DMT in. stores that it has because it, it felt like I was perceiving a pattern that previously I could not perceive mm -hmm. and hearing yeah. things that I previously could not. Uh, I had issues with uh, dolls that would move on their own in the same house. I fucking hated that. It used to creep me out because I always felt right, like they were staring at own. me. I, I'm sorry to keep interrupting you, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated. <laughs> okay. When you say move on their own, like it wiggle a little or it would just be here and now it's like in another room. Yeah, like be in a second one. Leave it. Uh, but to an extreme degree. So we were rich. We had a giant toy room bigger than this office that had a whole fucking wall of stuffed animals. And they all had these little glass eyes that I thought were staring at me all the time because fucked up little kid. Mm -hmm. Didn't like it. Very annoying. So what I decided to do one day is go in there and turn all 100 of them around to face the wall. So just like teddy bear butts facing the rest of the room. And my little play areas, I had a little game station right beside the door to the playroom. So just sit in the door would be like right like right here, right here. Mm -hmm. So I did that and I was like, great, I'm going to go play Road Rash on N64. And I do that for a little bit. I was like, I want something from the toy room. So it might have been an hour and a half later. Nobody is going in there. Parents are like gone, gone. It's just me. If somebody did go in, it would have had to been like right beside me, beside me. Right. I go in there and all 100 of these fucking dolls have turned around and they're not just facing outward on the shelf like where they were, but the ones on the further ends are like angled in. So they're all looking at the door the very moment I opened it. Ooh. Did you so turn I them back closed, around? Yeah, I just closed the door and left. Just fucking out. Bye. See ya. Did they ever never, move again like, after that? I've never seen uh, or heard anything. I wish. I wish. No, I you don't. You don't wish. It's this so sound, not this sounds fun. horrid. Why would you want this? I don't want what he's got. He's, I mean, I mean, clearly he has a a, a thing going on. Yeah, a I touch of the crazies. Yeah, I, 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 I just, I just want to see a door wiggle one time or something like. I want it to turn into like the Pillsbury Doughboy or someone good. Kyle, you're muted. Seen uh, lights. I've seen Hat Man, the old woman. Uh, I've seen, heard of plenty of number of, like weird, mostly weird sounds. You hear things dragging around in the wall, or little voices and whispers and stuff. Um, but it, okay, so it wasn't just me; it was the whole family. We all had to deal with this shit for like seven years. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. So they were seeing stuff as well with dolls yes. and, and yes. Uh, my mother, especially, she's got a whole host of colorful mental problems. So her reporting is less than uh, reliable. Uh, my brother has a few creepy stories. Who was very young, and the interesting one is that the old man, my stepfather, is like this Vietnam War veteran. He's not into this spooky ghost shit. My mom complains mm -hmm. about ghosts all the time. He's like, shut the fuck up. You don't know what real horror is. Um, Finally, and then fucking last, a normal person. And uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm all here alone listening to the last 40 minutes of make believe bullshit. None of this happened. None Dude, of but this it got him true. too. None it of this is no. anything. It didn't no, get on, him. What you, there was a wrong. night we heard footsteps the sprinting through the house and noises. He bolted up out of the bedroom, shotgun. Who's in the house? And we're all like, we've been telling you it's a fucking ghost. And he's like, Oops. bullshit. And he just starts going around to see if there's anybody like breaking in the house or sneaking around outside and stuff like that. So it got him a time or two too. The the demon got him. You just don't believe Woody. You're just you're just a skeptic. Well, here's the reality. It's what happened from my perspective, which exactly. is only as reliable as you believe in me. And so like I think you have a mental illness, but but I wish you the <laughs> Best. Just I believe best. in your ghost stories this much. Well, see, okay. Woody, but we, we, but we talked about this with like the schizophrenia oh, thing. When we talked about schizophrenia a couple of weeks ago. Like, mm -hmm. in their eyes, everything they're saying is one hundred percent real, and it's like they're not they're not trying to like pull the wool over your eyes. They're like, no, I saw a shadow person, and so like to them, it's real, and so it's like just as horrifying as if it is real, you know? Sure. And you can't unremember it. So as an adult, this continues about three or four times a year. I will briefly see or hear a thing that's not there, not a spooky ghost. I mean, it'll be just be like, I'll just be like laying in bed by myself and it's dead silent. And I'll hear, uh, welcome to Wendy's. What would you like to order? And I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> so just just ran number audit. six with a Coke Zero. Yeah, just <laughs> coming little, right tiny. Up. Like maybe like one shadow person scooting by and then going to do his own thing super quick. Uh, but the difference between that and schizophrenia is a schizophrenic almost certainly believes that. Schizophrenics are confused that all of you don't see the same thing. Mm -hmm. They don't 
it's like the object permanence or that one person can have knowledge that the other one doesn't. There's like an incongruency. So yeah. those hallucinations are reality. But in my case, I know that they're not real. Damn. That, as a kid, you probably thought they were real though, right? Oh, very real. Yeah. Very, very much so. That's horrible. I've never seen a demon or a ghost, anything like that. You know, but I guess it's only a matter of time, Woody, until one I crosses had, my path. I had night terrors for a decade. I was, oh, no. Yeah. I, my listeners have heard it before, but in fast forward, my house got robbed. I confronted the burglar. Uh, later, the police called him. I think I read about someone like that in the paper. But um, even though in the moment, you know, it was the man I would aspire to be. Afterwards, I was terrified. I couldn't sleep without a knife underneath me. The, the burglar had been in our home, like, I don't know how many times, eight times, 12 times, like a bunch. And uh, um, what are you guys laughing at? Oh, no. I'm he laughing. Drifter was saying, this went off the rails. I'm like, it's all good. You're good. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, I'm not laughing at your trauma. It's not. Let's <laughs> yeah. laugh. So to roll it along, I, didn't laugh I had this recurring yeah. dream where I'm sleeping. There's a figure in the doorway. And I need to either fight him off or defend myself, but I'm sort of sleep paralyzed. And then I would wake up in a sweat and, you know, not be paralyzed anymore. And that happened to me for like a decade. It was a long time. It was, it was like a PTSD level trauma that every night. Mm -mm. No, it was really frequent. And in the first couple of years and infrequent towards the end of the 10, you weren't seeing like someone sitting at the foot of your bed or anything like that when you were in like the terror state, right? In the dream, I would see someone in the doorway, in the like, doorway. you know, blocking it was the only entrance into the room and he was coming for us. And and then I would, you know, I was just trying to get up and mm -hmm. handle it, but I couldn't move because I'm asleep. And, you know, you know you're in that state where, yeah. like, what's happening in real world is kind of playing out in the dream, too. And I'm just barely able to move in the dream. I'm paralyzed with fear until mm -hmm. I wake okay. up. Then what happens when you wake up? My wife uh, would console me, say it was just a dream. Uh, like, that's what happened. I realized it had a bad dream. And this probably doesn't happen, like, at all anymore. Right. Yeah. Right. Sounds I, a little bit like sleep paralysis, in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That always sounded terrifying. so horrifying. I'm so glad I've never had a night terror or sleep paralysis. And, like, the friends I've, I've had over the years who have it and talk about it, so many of them have the same exact thing. Like the, it's not like we're sitting around in a circle talking about it. It's many people over the years I'm talking to, and they all say they see a figure, whether it's a demon or a ghoul or a ghost or a goblin, all sitting, Robber. yeah, sitting on the bed, looking at them. Like they're all sitting on the bed with them, and it just is weird to me that like all these different people, different walks of life, they all say no, same thing. A demon sitting on the bed with me, looking at me, nah. right next to my feet. Yeah, in my case, it's dark. I can't see what's up. Picture him a little bit dressed like the guy from Scream, like some sort of cloak or whatever. And uh, I don't know. I got to deal with shit and I can't because I've got sleep paralysis. Oh, uh, have you ever had that, Kyle? No, I've never had sleep paralysis or anything um, really like that. Um, I've had some really scary nightmares. Um, but uh, I also have this weird thing, and I've done it since I was a kid, where like if I'm in too scary of a nightmare, I'll like jump off of something high like straight out of my head, like try to kill myself in the dream and I'll, I'll like wake up right away. If I, yeah, I'll, I'll have dreams where like I, I'm falling from a mountain or something like just, I'm just falling except then like the fall decelerates and then I'm just walking. Like it just, the fall just ends and it's like that like stomach like roller coaster feeling, but it's not even unpleasant. Cause like, even though like, cause I'm never falling I'm like failing at flying. It's never like straight down. It's like, <laughs> like going down like that until it's just like, whoop, just start walking like the Harry Potter people when they're like all going through that warp and then they're just fine walking. They're just like almost flying. Yeah. But I always know I'm dreaming when that happens. So it doesn't really get too spooky. Man, I don't have any good nightmares to so share. If y'all are falling, do you wake up before you hit the ground? No, I hit the ground and like have a sensation of breaking my neck and then I wake up. Hey, we're in the oh. same boat. Oh, no, I'm the opposite. Stuck. I hit, I wake up just before I hit the ground. Probably the better way to do it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know there was another choice. I, I choose mine. <laughs> if I don't jump from high enough, then I just hurt my neck, and now the bad guys are closer. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've, never, I've never tried to commit suicide in a dream, ever. Yeah, there's a, there's a I, I learned that there's like this, like, um, there's a, there's a minimum height 
to, to, <laughs> to acquire, to like accomplish suicide in a dream. And uh, I tried to like jump off a chair once in a dream. Like, that. no, that's not high enough. You got to get like five feet off the ground, six feet off the ground, something like that. A I chair. Cats can jump from any height in real life. What do you I mean? Don't... They can jump from any height. They could jump off a 10 story building and land on their feet and walk away. No, it's not true. Just... I, that wasn't I'm so enough. confused. Is I'm he British? So confused by the last. <laughs> how, how long we go? Three hours? We're three hours in. We, yeah, this is I this episode like, has been going like, like an hour work. because I've been so fascinating, fascinated by Drifter. Um, wow. I did. Did you know he had all those things going on? No, I didn't know anybody had that much going on, like with with seeing demons and ghouls and them, like it. Just straight up auditory and visual hallucinations. He was having so, constantly so, as a child. So he seems. has a, like a severe um, neurological disorder, huh? Yeah, some sort of but sensory, only one but only one penis. Mm -hmm. How's the shadow people? Have you have you been? <laughs> how are they? Uh, uh, the true question. Very little. I think I saw one shadow person very briefly. A couple of months ago, uh, so my office, the door is kind of right over here, just off camera, and I was just sitting here doing my thing, and I saw a humanoid kind of shadow walk by. I looked at it, and I looked down at the dog, and the dog didn't look, and I was like, well, that's probably not real, and I kind of went back to my editing. That's not too bad. No, and it's that, not. It's not. Well, let's hope that dog hasn't gotten used to the intruder living in your home. <laughs> no, <laughs> I've, I've always uh, <laughs> had to rely on pets for a little a little gauge of reality. If you hear a weird noise or see a weird thing, is the dog interested in it? If the dog's yeah. not interested, it's probably all up here. You've got a whole canary in the coal mine thing going on for your uh, for your hallucinations. Yeah, yeah pretty clever. much, pretty much. Those are extremely infrequent as an adult. As a kid and a teenager, not so much. As an adult, very managed. Yeah, mine are very infrequent. <laughs> I had none. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, you know, we're, we're hoping that it stays that way, but you never know. <laughs> Dude, I was th this is just the other night. Like okay. I had just watched I, I watch a lot of like campy, shitty horror movies late at night. I enjoy them. I, I really I like them. But like you still like if there's a ghoulish face or something, it might stick out to you. And mm -hmm. like I don't really get spooked too much. It just holds my attention. And I was going to bed and like I was looking at, you know, those like side like taller windows that are to the side of your door that yeah, you can, like, kind of see through. Mm -hmm. I was walking life. down my hall and I looked and I saw like an angle off of it that looked like the same ghoulish face of that of that uh got, like monster from the movie. Mm -hmm. And I was like I like didn't respond but I felt my heart rate go like up 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 and then I like looked a little closer and it was like oh that's a that's the light playing oh. tricks. And then I went to bed. I can't imagine spending the rest of the night with what you did where you're like, it's probably not a demon. Probably. It's <laughs> almost probably. certainly not a demon. Like, uh, tell us about another time. Uh, tell us about another time. The shadow people. Were oh, <laughs> good. Okay. That's, that's more light. Fun. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's light, see. You bitch. <laughs> de -de 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 -de. Uh, I saw a glowing And did they light always look one time? time? Or did... Oh, uh, oh uh, well, uh, I've Kyle, seen the Kyle, old hag, not the hat man. Too. Excuse me? Glowing lights. Oh, you've orbs. never seen that? Yet. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, you just said Hat Man. So, mm -hmm. like, we, uh, when my I, wife I got saw into hat reading man. about, a, oh, yeah. does she abuse Benadryl? Uh, no, none of us do. No Ambien, no Benadryl, none of that kind of stuff. Or a fun one uh, I used to live on a property that was formerly owned by a cult, and it was really weird. And it was kind of haunted y. So, some of my Spanish in laws thought it'd be a great idea to have an exorcism. So, I got to watch that when I was a little kid, which was a uh, bizarre short version. We bought a house way out in the middle of nowhere in Texas. It bedded like 18, but mostly in weird bunk beds that were built into the attic. And it was very fish, uh, like greenhouse, very self sustaining. And the people that lived there all of a sudden moved like. Pfft, Overnight and sold it like dirt cheap. Dude, this is this is this is a lot to ingest, real. dude. Who are no. you? Huh? I'm a lot of people so and a lot were, of things. You were growing <laughs> up in fucking Waco or something. Like, yeah, like, uh, it's what, more. What it's a lot more remote than Waco, but yeah. Damn. The oh, town dude. had 40 people. Oh, David Koresh was terrified yeah. of our compound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, we anyway. kicked him out for his simpleton views. It wasn't extreme <laughs> enough for us. Uh, the house was very weird. There was always weird noises, always weird shit going on. You could never sleep because something would go bump in the night. Nothing like super horrifying or shadow people or whatever, but it fucked with everybody in the house. 
uh, mostly would come from my brother's room, which was weird because we thought he was getting up in the night. So we would make him sleep downstairs and it would still happen. Or if he slept up there, he said he would never hear anything. But downstairs sound like a nightmare. And uh, it happened once when one of my in-laws was at the house and she happened to be a devout uh, Spanish Catholic. And it freaked her right properly the fuck out. And she came back with some of her friends. I don't think they were priests. And they started uh, putting oils on the walls and crosses and out with you demons and then shit in Spanish that I couldn't understand and consecrating and cursing and blessing. And I, you know, I'd seen scary movies growing up. So I was like, oh, this is really cool. I want to see this. I've never seen an exorcism or a blessing or a demon warding, whatever it is that they're doing, because yeah. I don't speak Sounds Spanish. I don't know. And uh, I was very pissed off because I was not allowed. To, I was the only person not allowed to witness the exorcism because I was the only person in the house that was unbaptized. And they were all afraid that the ghost or whatever would go into me. So I had to go uh, way on the other side of the property while they banished evil spirits or whatever. And the short version is it didn't do a goddamn thing. All the spooky stuff kept happening. So yeah, of uh, course, I'm a, because it's all Christ. fake. And what are you, huh? are you baptized? Yeah, I believe these people Drifting? buy NFTs. Drifting, yeah, probably. Baptized. You're not bad. Uh, me? Person? Yeah. Uh, I am now. I'm I, I'm the only one. Huh. Mm. Uh, I guess I don't think I'm as remotely You've religious as I baptized? used to be, so I don't know if that counts, but I did get baptized. Yes. I, I, Dude, you're not, going to hell so hard, man. You know, I, I, I don't know why, but but like we used to do that thing. Dude, I, I, I can't know. wait. Me and Woody are gonna be fucking high fiving, riding a tandem <laughs> bike uh -huh. up in heaven. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> On a cloud somehow. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting any traction. Can, can I? Can I just? I'll hit you guys with a less crazy one, uh, yeah. a more of a funny one. Uh, it was when I was like 16, 17 years old. I had moved away from that bad place uh, to a, we'll say, different place in Mississippi. I lived in a very small house. We were not rich people. Um, I. My dad made like $4,000 a year and there was a little bit of subsistence hunting kind of stuff going on. And uh, I was big into video games. I'd play. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. $4,000 a year. Forget that, yeah. Taylor. Could you just say the words that you hunted for your own food? A little bit. <laughs> it wasn't you. anything crazy. You know, you catch fish from the river, you shoot a deer here and there. If a redneck has something, they want a trophy and not the meat. I'll take it. This is awesome. Yeah, so oh, stuff like that. Uh, my wife would eat raccoons and stuff and possums and whatever the fuck. Made, they're really chewy and gamey, but we did a lot of that. Did you kill them or find them by the roadside? You're not supposed to. I uh, kill them. I just pop them, shoot them with a 22. Uh, but the point is, we lived kind of broke as a really small little house, and I lived in a really small little room. We didn't have any heat or air, so whatever it was outside, it just was inside, and I had to deal with it. Uh, but I would sit there on my little TV, and I'd play video games, and I was big into video games. One night, I go to bed, everything's normal. And I hear this giant fucking crash and slam and like uh, glass breaking. And the only thing I can think is that my brand new fan that I got installed, by the way, if I lived like three years with no fan in the summer. I was super happy to have my fan. That blows I thought the fan had fallen down because we used the cheapest repairman possible. And I thought, fuck, I'm gonna have to spend all summer with no fan. So mm -hmm. I get up and go kind of like around the walls of my room to avoid stepping on glass and turn on the light. And everything is fine. Everything is totally fine fine and normal and i'm like have i lost my mind and then i look over to my little desk where i would do my homework and there's a giant pile of old video games and when i say old i mean 1980s old like the ghostbusters game and super mario duck hunt the original boxes in pretty good conditions and what was weird about this is these were things that i had owned eons ago right Desk was clean when I went to bed. These are things that I had not seen in 10 plus years at that point. When you give something to a three-year-old in 1989, it tends to get torn up. I remember moving and throwing them away. And then suddenly in the middle of the fucking night, for no reason, there's a whole pile of vintage games just sitting <clears throat> on my desk. You know, there's no explanation, no nothing. You know, Drifter, huh. I find you to be a charming and tough man. Okay. I, I I really enjoy it when you're on. I, like I look forward to it uh, because okay, there's a butt though. But when you talk about things like this, I think that well, I hope that 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 everyone's ears are perking up and hearing these things. And 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 look, like I have a side of me that thinks that there's a chance that you are haunted by demons. I am not made that a zero sum thing. Okay, mm -hmm. there's I, you may be haunted by demons. I want you to do paranormal videos where you like film yourself like do like 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 
set up one of those night vision cameras by your bed, dude. And like, like if, he, if anything ever happens and you could string this together, I'd, I'd be a viewer because you creep me out by telling me this stuff the same way. Um, uh, what's our friend uh, who came out a while, a while back who does the scary stories? Uh, Wenda, it's the Wenda, Wenda, You're muted, Taylor. <clears throat> I'm muted. I'm so sorry. Wenda, Wenda. <laughs> Wendigo, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Wendigo. When you start telling me like stuff about your childhood or adolescence or maybe even the last few years, mm -hmm. this, this stuff about seeing things, it creeps me out the way that uh, Wendigo, I want to get his Wendigoon, name right because yeah. I do like him. I, I watch his videos all the time. It's just I think it's like Wendigo, now. but uh, Wendigoon. Yeah, 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 but well, it's because there's, I think there's a mythical monster called a Wenda, Wendigo. Wendigo. Is it a Wendigo. 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 Yeah, 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 Walker yeah. kind of eats people. Exactly. Yeah, it, it, it pretends like to be people, and that's like, yeah, and. Those and and that's one of those monsters. Movies. That's one of those monsters that like like something that takes the form of humans. Those are the ones that like if you're whatever you want to call it, open minded or goofy or or silly enough or or, or whatever to believe in, in crazy stuff. That's one of the ones that can make sense to like sneak mm -hmm. by. Like no, you don't understand. Of course, we don't know they exist. They take the form of what we see every day. People it looks like a normal guy just walking down the street or maybe minding his own business in the woods. You don't know. It's like the thing. Rep which is or, or, the yeah. greatest horror movie ever <laughs> or maybe like reptilians you know taking the form of uh you know, humans you know the, the whole overlord the reptilian thing. Like, like, part like, like they it, live it doesn't make sense because like the the, the like reptilian conspiracy thing it says they're underground mm -mm. they're cold-blooded they'd be way too hot so it'd be warm down there it'd be warm they need there. that to stay warm they, they, they need, need that, that to live they'd live on geothermals and to, to to live above ground, they want to. Uh, uh, they've they've taken positions of power. And no, it's 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 and not they, like and, basking in the sun hot down there. It's unbelievably hot. It depends how deep you go, Taylor. Okay, have you been to the mines of Korgoroth? I think no. Uh, I'm making this have up. You as seen, go along. Have you seen the uh. steam pools of the deep Gogola? Yeah, I, if I hadn't, I wouldn't have made. Where the story. reptile men are numbered in the millions, and the reptile women do whatever you want. Do you think they have tits? Oh, you ever no, seen one of those? Al man. You ever seen one of those alligator cloacos? That, that that little slit. It's yeah. Like like humans could learn a, a few things about vaginas from alligators. <laughs> oh god. Right? And and dolphins. <sighs> yeah. Oh god. And dolphins. Like like like. I saw a uh, Impractical Jokers bit where like they ha he's he's like. You know, you ever wonder what dolphin puss looks like? He has to say that to a yeah. pretty woman. And she literally goes, I think it's just kind of circular. Like she just <laughs> rolls with it and it's just like, damn. Well, Love it. Dude, every once in a while they run up against a cool person who's no, just but, as down to be silly. Yeah, but 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 back to the thing. I worry that 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 maybe like like you know, you're hallucinating, right? Do you think you're hallucinating? Pro I probably. That's the most logical thing right and i'm the not most trying to be logic. shitty i'm not trying to be shitty about this or like like like, oh, no. like we've talked about this when you weren't here and i don't i don't want you to think that like i'm doing that behind your back or, or, like, no, or anything no. like that kyle like, kyle's fascinated by this whole thing okay like, i really well, yeah. i don't get offended easily so it's no worries yeah like, like, don't think that i'm like hallucinate. behind your back like laughing it up about no no you, or, or, no it's like, ridiculous i tell these stories because the silly. situation is just ridiculous and it's it is it's interesting to me like genuinely yeah last time you were on kyle was like guys we should have stayed on the paranormal shit the whole four hours. I'm fascinated. Yeah. Oh, by I it. could go on about that now forever because so much like weird shit happened. But the short version is Woody's gone. I feel like he. I feel like he just didn't want to hear this shit, and he probably no, counts. no. He's he's. Uh, he's I, I think, I think he's doing some home improvement stuff. He's uh, pooping or getting uh, a snack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the reality uh, is that a lot of this happened at a very not so great time in my life. Uh, my home life was broken. I was moving a lot. I was stressed out a lot. Uh, I mean, I was the kind of kid that would have to stay up late at night and keep the shoes by the bed because you might have to bounce like that. And it's very realistic to say that the stress of that does not do good things to the psyche of children. For sure. So as I move into adulthood, these things happen far less frequently. They do still happen. So I think, well, did I really like, did this shit like really happen? Which the subreddit, your subreddit tore me a whole new asshole about this, about supposedly lying or whatever. Oh. But the practical version is I have to think, well, it only happened experientially in here, most likely, because I don't live my life making decisions based on what I think shadow people or demons or whatever the fuck are going to do. I'm a very yeah, logical, yeah. scientific person. That's what I appreciate about what you're saying, because you're not coming here in your like Dan Aykroyd, for example, a guy that I really am a huge fan of since I was a kid. I think he's a brilliantly funny man from SNL mm -hmm. and, 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 and Ghostbusters and all the writing he's done. Mm -hmm. But he's a whack job when you when you when you hear him speak. 
And and when he talks about aliens or secret societies, and he's got that really really quick Chicago accent, and he's explaining <laughs> it to you, and you're just like Crystal Skull Vodka. And then he starts yeah. talking about aliens, and, and and you're just like, okay, you're a whack. Dan, Dan Aykroyd is into aliens and sh- yeah, his whole family Dan, used to be psychic mediums. Oh, so Dan Aykroyd, so weirdo. Dan Aykroyd is incredibly wacky. You know his character in uh, Ghostbusters, how he's like a paranormal psycho psychologist. Yeah, but I thought that Actually, was just him. And- no, well, that, they were all like, kind of paranormal. A psychos. lot of the wackadoo writing is him going to Ivan Reitman, who just ripped, who just passed away, and being like. Oh, we gotta have some stuff about the occult in here. Like, like they wrote that fucking movie, and and he he has always been wacky like that with the occult, conspiracies, aliens, and and he believes stringently in it. He he has that Crystal Skull Vodka company, and wait, that's go, his company. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He makes yeah. a lot of money selling that. That, that, that is to that is like guess. like so many people know that like y- you walk through like your grocery store and go through the alcohol aisle. And like so much of it is just the coolness of the designs that gets you where you're like, OK, well, this one looks like a wine bottle and it's seven ninety nine. This one looks cool as shit. It's got a skull and it's eleven ninety nine. I'm going to always go skull. I'll, it's cooler. The th- that is one of the best gimmicks. Ever I've never had that. Kind it's of vodka not great though. vodka, but it's not awful vodka. And you get a skull out of it. It's cool. Like you can fill it up with sand of different colors, like do one of those little sand art things you can. You can do a lot of stuff with it. I saw someone take this glow in the dark sand that you can like, and they filled it up with that. And then the whole skull would just glow under black light. I don't know. They're, they're neat little props to like throw on a, a desk or something like that too. I think, but, that, like, at, but yeah. what I was getting at, so I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't want to get away from the point. No, like, go for it. That's a wacky guy who I think is just a mm-hmm. loon. I don't think that of you at all. So I appreciate like, but, that. A lot of people you, do. <laughs> but when you casually talk about this stuff, it can lend itself. There. So, so, but what I, I see from you is not someone who's trying to convince me that there are, paranormal things happening it's someone who's telling me about what you're talking about your mental illness essentially and and how like traumatic events have triggered uh, th- this more uh, at, at certain points in your life and how you basically see things that aren't there and how you and i don't know how you cope with that because if i thought like like right now i've got my monitors in front of me some lighting and shit and but, but like across that room there's a door over there if i look ever looked up I'm alone at my house right now. If I ever looked mm-hmm. up and I saw something, look at me through there. It would upset me so much that I don't think I could live alone anymore. <clears throat> I talked about this with someone like yesterday when I, because because someone asked me who was coming on, and, and we we had a very similar discussion to what we're having right now. And, but but I told him like, I I couldn't even live alone anymore. I don't think, and I don't think mm-hmm. like getting a a full time like live in girlfriend would do the trick. I think I'd have to move back in with my father to feel safe again. If there were dark men in my house, like that sounds silly. Well, no, no, that's, uh, <laughs> if there's people. static man yeah. or shadow, no, yeah. if, there, if, there's, if there's dark, it's men, dark weird. shadow people or something like, and something I'm interested in with what Drifter said is, I'd be so when, scared. When, when you described experiencing it as a kid, mm-hmm. you talk about like seeing a figure for extended periods of time. When you right. described it just now as an adult, you were like a fleeting image in the corner like is that how it tends to be now as an adult it's more of a fleeting like it could be a shadow and it's just mm -hmm. your childhood reminding you like oh that could be that yeah something like that as an adult very fleeting uh i don't hallucinate thing very infrequently Mm -hmm. three four times a year tops if it's if it's busy audio is a little more frequent but it's usually just very very small things it's not whispering voices and crazy shit like that Uh, but i think the improvement came to an improvement to my psyche when i left the very toxic environment Mm -hmm. but that doesn't change the memories of these things and as a kid i was rationally like you very scared i wouldn't stay certain places i wouldn't do certain things alone i wouldn't go places i wouldn't touch things and they take me to child psychologists and I would tell them about these things. None of them were impressed. I got a variety of medications, which kids probably shouldn't have. Agreed. Um, but at the end of the day, even though I'm very cognizantly aware that there's like a 99% chance that everything I see exists only up here, it doesn't change the reality of the memories for me. Like, mm-hmm. so Kyle you're, or Taylor, you're very reasonable people. If a very unreasonable thing happened, a very spooky shadow person or ghost just peeked around the corner and said, fuck you, Kyle. And then just disappeared. And you saw it for real, totally yeah. for real. Mm. You couldn't unremember it. You couldn't remember it like any other different it, way. It would be you in know? your mind forever. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let me ask you this. I, I like what, where you've led me here. Um, the memories that you have of mm. these encounters, let's call them, 
are they just as grounded? Do they feel just as real as like your 15th birthday party or something like yes, that? Hundred uh, percent. That's why when I first started my YouTube channel, I can see you laugh already. Uh, I endeavored to tell these stories uh, and I told almost all of them in about a 10 or 15 part series so that as I get older and my memory changes and you recall and your retell and things change so that at least the best memory I had available at the time existed as a sort of uh, yeah. log. But I do remember them as real. Matter of fact, I had something happen when I was 15. It was a bunch of weird noises that made me leave my house. I didn't really like it. I didn't know how to deal with it. So I just fucking left and went to a friend's house. And I had a very awkward conversation telling my friend that, yeah, I want to spend the night here because something is following me around the house and making noises. Like, I don't expect be, you to believe you that. Know, just humor me. Oh, I not only would I believe it, but I would be like, mom, he's back. You promised you'd do something. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 mom, you said you'd call the police this time. He keeps oh, okay. coming back. You know he's haunted, right? I saw it too. They say if he sleeps at your house, it kills you in seven days. I'm not, <laughs> he kills me. Not, days. No Don't way. watch no any way. VHS he brought with him. He brought. You're, you're being drug away by your mom. You're like it's Jurassic Park. <laughs> That's very interesting. Like oh, that. No. God, so it's weird. So scary, you, you, you said that the visual hallucinations. Mm as a kid, very intense, as an adult, fleeting, and it's more almost maybe an anomaly in the corner of your eye that triggers an internal memory of a similar shaped thing. Is auditory the same thing where now, where when you were a kid, it was full sentences, full voices, and now it's more of just kind of something curious that you don't think exists? Well, weirdly, um, I had no voices as a kid, nothing really oh, okay. talked so much. Every now and then you would get thoughts that weren't yours. Uh, so to speak, more of an idea mm -hmm. and less of a less of a words, a voice babbling. Time out again. Time out again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So up until now, again, I don't know much, but up until now, it seems like you've described a lot of things that yeah. seemed like they were external. You experienced mm -hmm. them as external events, but now you described something that you experienced as an internal event, something where you had a feeling or a thought that didn't feel like it was yours, which is a mm -hmm. um, maybe a sister. Um, mental illness but i don't think coincides with 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 the same mental illness i wish we next time you come on we're gonna have a doctor here okay yeah you can bring a doctor i'm sure i'll give them all sorts of, i've I'm been curious. doctors busy right I'm now so as a matter curious. of fact and i'm glad that you're open to it and, and and you realize that i'm not trying to like make light of this that, that like i'm genuinely like interested <laughs> if I'm we glad, can't and find i'm telling a doctor, these stories because um, they're interesting i think it is me. interesting content they, you know they, they it's very me. interesting content i i love spooky supernatural stuff and, oh. or or just hallucinations you know all right all right and, if you if you do then like i, I mentioned a minute ago but wendigoon like like god i hope you get your night name right bro uh wendigoon I, yeah I, I fucking love you by the way um he's uh i watched his video about like sea mysteries and maybe i was just in the right mood and the lighting in the room was right it was like two in the morning when i watched too mm -hmm. it was creeping me out i was getting like the chills a little bit like, just, mm. like like i was getting a little uncomfortable you were getting with, those, like, those goosebumps pulling the blanket you. up a little bit yeah because he because he's talking he's, he's telling a story of like this turn of the century uh boat going from america to europe and the captain brings his his wife and his new and his like young child he he cruised the ship with 15 good men like m half of which are close friends and confidants all experienced sailing men carrying a thousand barrels of barrels of ethanol to uh to, to to europe and the ship is found about a few hundred miles off the coast of europe completely empty and with no signs of struggle food is on the tables ink and parchment is out on the table so the ship couldn't have rocked very much um there's a little water in the hole, but that's who, uh, kind of standard who, for those ships of the of that age. It? And one, um, I'll get to that. And and uh, one of the lifeboats, the, the ropes have been cut and it's missing. So hmm. like you know, you he met Wendigan makes the point that like in that time you wouldn't cut your rope as a sailor at sea on a cross Atlantic voyage. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. cut. You have so much rope, and then you have no rope. And rope is a your rigging is your life out there because your sail is your life. You need it. Yeah. It, it, they need that rope that you wouldn't cut the rope except in an emergency we need it now there's no time to like untie a knot there's no there, 10 seconds doesn't exist here we mm -hmm. need and so the the people who find yeah. it um another experienced captain who takes the ship in to get the salvage rights so then there's a court proceeding to determine if everything's legit because you have a and and so like 
they investigated this thing thoroughly and came up with every conceivable theory. And in the end, no one has any idea what happened to the captain, his family, his 12 or 15 crew. They can't come up with a scenario that makes sense mm. yeah. for, for them to abandon their ship like that. Or And the other thing, the valuable was, was cargo... Was there anything stolen from the ship? No, that's what I was no. going to say. The valuable cargo is there. The captain's sword is in his quarters. You'd think that, you know, if, it, if, if things got rough, he'd have the sword, you know, not under his bed. Pretty not, logical. Yeah. You know? So uh, what, I, what what was the conclusion of it? Like, that's the, they have every, no idea? So he tells like five or six stories about the sea in this one video. And the end of every story is, who knows? <laughs> like, like no one knows. And um, that all the cargo is intact, a thousand barrels of ethanol, which I suppose is like reasonably valuable at the time. Certainly not um, a small amount of money. Yeah, it's... Uh, ethanol? Those, for some reason, those creep me out. It, it's, it's alcohol. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's just alcohol. It it's alcohol for industrial use. Oh, okay. you, you know, it's not ghosts, right? It's not bullshit. It's no. Not so why, did the, why would people leave the ship quickly? If you think the ship's going to go down, you leave the ship. If you th- if the sense. ship is like in a position where you think she's going down and the life bo- boat is a more reasonable choice than staying on board. Mm-hmm. So so you got to think of like all the scenarios in which that thought occurs to you. Fleeing from pirates, weirdly. You, well, pirates Maybe. would rob you, right? They take yeah, the you and all you think. Um, so like in my mind, I have to get so convoluted. I'm like, all right, maybe pirates come. But it goes bad, and the captain's family is killed, and the pirate one pirate turns on the other pirate, and he kills that pirate because he doesn't like that a family's been killed. He's there for the money, not for all this craziness. And then everybody ha- go, but no, that doesn't work. It doesn't no make any blood. sense. There's no blood. There's no mm-hmm. like sign of struggle. I want to say that the actually, I want to say that the uh, the 300 pound block that they put the compass in. I don't know what those are called. It's some not nautical term for the thing the compass goes in on a sailboat. It's a big thing that was knocked over. Which was odd, because it's heavy. And so, it's so in, in uh, I'm assuming in all these examples, ev- everybody who jumped ship and like got on the lifeboat, they died before they got to shore. So there was never any. They never to found be a like, body. Oh, never... the the SS uh, Ulysses. I was on that. What happened was X Y Z. No, Just... no. This is a, this is like 15 men who were never seen from again. Another one was more modern. This was that because the first one's 100 years ago. The second one was three mm-hmm. guys on what looked like a. Um, um, a catamaran, like like maybe like fishing vessel type thing, yeah. And uh, like like all three of them somehow they found the boat um, with the sail ripped, empty, and the food was laid out on the table again. Um, you know the the engine was in neutral, and uh, there's a fishing pole out on the deck, and the uh, the fishing line is the, the hook is in the rigging under the boat. These are all the clues we have. And so they had to do another one of these like coroner's report things in a situation like this. And the coroner has to write the most plausible thing for what he what he thinks happened. And his is that guy gets his fishing line stuck, falls in the water. The other guy says, oh, no, I'll save you. He jumps in the water. Third guy throws the boat in neutral because two of his friends are in the water. And the mast swings around and hits him Three Stooges style, knocking him into the water. And the boat cruises off, leaving them all to die. This this doesn't make any sense. That's what Wendigoon said. He's like, so it needs to be like some sort of slapstick comedy style. You need you need Mo and Curly to make that work. (laughs) Clean out the whole ship. They're all gone. Uh, What about a methane (laughs) gas bubble? But that would probably sink the ship too. so, th- so if something like that happens, then then maybe that could explain people abandoning a, sh- a ship, though, right? Like, like, yeah. Like, like, but but that wasn't the case. You know, the the boat didn't have water in it, and like, right. in the in the case of um, in one of the instances, um, the records were so meticulous that you could tell the hour that it had happened. It was like, all right, it happened between nine a.m. and ten a.m. on August the third. Something happened, and because because there's a there's an account from eight a eight a.m. to nine p- nine a.m. And then 9 a.m. to 10 never happens. Hmm. That is bizarre. It is. And these make for very creepy stories. <laughs> yeah, he's got so that can be you. stories. He's got so you could go on a stories. boat with your friends and just disappear. You don't Dude, know. The ocean is so fucking scary. And, and it's that, that the was... scariest. Like demons are arguably the least scary thing out there because I don't know if demons can swim. Sharks can. <laughs> Octopus <laughs> can. Everything in there that wants to eat you can. Like, the ocean's like a big murder factory. Like if Aquaman could hear, he would just hear constant screaming of everything eating everything else constantly. In yeah. The ocean. Have, have, have you hmm. never like read those like excerpts or vignettes from 
soldiers who were part of like uh like a destroyer in the pacific that got sank in world war ii and they're just like hanging out bobbing for hours and hours Sharks waiting for rescue in. and there's like they have people writing journals like some of the soldiers like yeah and every you know every so often someone just gets torn down and it's like Shit. you're just waiting for yourself to be that i don't person. know how many shocks they were they <laughs> 500 <laughs> Doors eyes, dark eyes, like a doors eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fucked up shit. It's very interesting, though. That's oh, and story. Drifter transitioning seamlessly to the standing desk. <laughs> All right, I, I, I usually mute and try to do it less noticeably. The the that's motor our, can be a little loud. No, we didn't hear a thing. No, we didn't hear a thing. That's, the, uh, that's the USS Indianapolis, right? The uh, the World War II bomb bomb transporting ship. That, it might uh, be. I don't know many of the U.S. I think they surrendered on the USS Missouri. There was a USS Connecticut or something that got sank during the war. I don't know the USSs. So I don't know if I'm making a joke or not, but is the, I I'm, don't talking the, the, I'm talking about the the boat from the Jaws story. That's a true story, you know, about the boat going oh. down and and the men in the water with the sharks. That happened. Well, I'm I'm sure it happened a lot of times throughout history Jaws where a boat goes down story? and there's sharks. No, no, no. The story, well, the spooky actually, story Jaws, they tell the night before in Jaws. Jaws sure. is based on that bull shark or whatever that swam up the Jersey River and and, and like attacked a few th th a few people in that brackish water inland. Um, and they loosely based it on that. But um, the story that <clears throat> Quint tells in uh, mm -hmm. you know they're down below deck drinking, showing off scars, yeah. right? Right. And laughing it up. You see this one? No, uh, it's a broken heart. She broke my heart, and they all laugh it up. And he's like, "What about that one? What about that one?" And it gets he gets real sober and quiet. And he's like, "Ah, that's all that's all tattoo I had removed." Uh, what did it say, Mom? It said uh, USS Indianapolis. <laughs> he's like, "You were on the Indianapolis." Yeah. And this is Roy Schneider's like, "What oh, happened? Tell me the story." And it's just like not a happy story. They they were transporting the fucking bomb. Uh, and, and the mi mission was so secret that they never radioed that their boat had been torpedoed because their boat wasn't supposed to be there. So like 1,500 men or something go into the water, burnt badly in oil slicks that are still burning in some cases, covered in oil, shit, blood, and death as the, as the ship sinks and no one's going to be coming looking for them it's for insane. a week or something like that. And they're bobbing up and down and the sharks show up and it's the Pacific fucking ocean. So there's a lot of them. And they ate hundreds of men. You Do know. you guys it's, ever? It's arguable how many sharks ate and how you... many sharks killed, but it was a lot of men who were eaten What's and it? killed. Because we got this guy named yeah, Drifter. Drifter sees... has straight demons. Yeah, he, okay. he see... yeah. So we can get those demons to fight, maybe because yeah. the, he, this guy literally has hallucinations and he's had them his whole life, sporadically. It's not like every mm -hmm. Thursday or something. Like like maybe ten times in his whole life. Roughly, I'm I'm hoping God. I think in his childhood it was more often. But seems he sees, like it was more than that. Yeah. He sees a man when he'll like look down a hallway. He'll see a man peering like like around the corner at him, who is composed of the static from an untuned television. That is what the man, the static what? man. He's made of static. So he's just staring at him around the corner. Yeah, he'll just he was like, you know, maybe get up to take a piss, like like be pissing, like look up down the hallway, and there's a static man looking at him. And you know, maybe like close his eyes, blink twice, and static man's gone. And now he has to finish pissing and try to go back to sleep. That's Tell terrifying. Us. I am so uninterested in fake stories, I didn't even know that. Like I can't pay attention to his story. I, I you know well, I'm curious, like what why why are you more interested in like someone hallucinating as a result of LSD than someone hallucinating as a result of like an inherent uh, neural imbalance? Like they don't like gay demons. I, 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 I totally believe Drifter that he saw that stuff. It doesn't mean yeah. it's I'm there. Not saying it's like, untrue. I guess oh. it's just. I, 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 hmm. I you don't care about his hallucinations. Untrue. I just don't care about dreams. Now oh, the effects of drugs are interesting to me, but like that, sure. So the reason I care about his particular hallucination is it's very terrifying to me. Mm -hmm. And 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 because I'm putting myself in his shoes, right? He cannot be 100% sure that the static man isn't real. He cannot be 100% sure that he's not. I think he's cause, real. Because he's fucking seeing the thing. And, 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 and look, he's not, Drifter obviously isn't insane. So he doesn't, he doesn't believe in the static man. Like, right, right. But he he's knows, there. He knows he's mentally ill, but he's still seeing him. Like, 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 that's what's scary to me. I would be scared if there was a static man in my house. Me too. Of course. 
I would have to go beat off or something to get it out. I of would. My head. I would have to. Never, <laughs> I could never live in this house again. Thank you.